If one day your users report that they're getting this kind of an error message trying to use, uh, for example, the Pi System Explorer, uh, where would you go to start uh, troubleshooting? Well, there's some things we can suggest. Uh, let me just demonstrate what's happening on my particular uh, installation here. I'm going to go over to my, this is my SQL Server computer. And if you recall, the SQL Server computer is also the one that's running the AF client. So Pi System Explorer is installed here. Uh, I have a different AF server. And when I try to connect to that AF server, it's telling me it can't connect. So this is that type of an error message that you would expect to get. You know, some of the things that uh, I would start checking is let's check to see if that database connect string is redirecting the AF server to connect to the right computer for SQL Server. So now that uh, AF or that connect string, if you recall, was under PyPC AF and it's this AF service EXE. So open this up with Notepad, take a look at the uh, server name under the connect string, see if that's going to the right server, and if there's an instance of SQL Server that's listed there and see if they're both correct. So that's one thing to check. Second thing to check is to see if the account that you're trying to connect with is the proper account. Now, I, when I just checked my configuration file, that looked good. I had the right SQL Server computer name, so that's not a problem in my instance. Let me next go into the, I'm going to open up a copy of the services applet. Let me minimize some things here. I'll open up a copy of the services applet. This is on the AF server now. And on the AF server, this applet is, oh, I think this might be the problem right here. The uh, It's logging on as the NT or this, the, the network service, that uh, kind of default or, uh, or common uh, account that's used for, you know, by default in connecting. But if you recall, I had set this up during, or I had described setting this up using a domain account. And I can verify that. Let me go over to this other server. I'll go into the AF, or the SQL server now, and let's take a look at how we've configured the connection to work. I can look under the user groups, under AF servers, and this is where we, during the installation of the SQL Server component, this is where we defined a user group, and then we specified what members of that user group would uh, would be. Now I have this pointing not to a, you know, that network service account, not to that computer, but to a specific user. So what I need to do to resolve this issue let me go back to my AF server here. Go back to my AF server and I'm going to need to reconfigure this so that this logs on not as that, but as a specific user. So I'm going to go ahead and let me use you know, that computer right here. We're going to use the user called my user. Now in this case I'm not using domain users. I'm actually working across domains that do not have a trust. So I have the same user set up with the same username and password on two different machines that span domains. So my user, let me provide the password. And I'll go ahead and apply. And we're warned that that's not going to take effect until the next time we stop and restart. So I'll go ahead and restart this AF server. Now when the AF server connects, it should be connecting with an account that has the proper privileges. In the previous instance, it, it uh, connected with network service, and uh, that did not have the proper privileges. So let's see what happens now. Let me go back to, I'm going to go back to my SQL Server uh, computer. This is the one that's running the AF client. And let me abort out of this. This was my my copy of System Explorer that didn't connect. Let's see if it connects properly now. Oh, there we go. That resolved the issue because you know now that I have um, now that I've actually configured the AF server to connect with the right user, the user who is defined here, then that AF server has no problem connecting. Okay, let's see what's next. Another thing we can do is just verify that the SQL Server database engine is actually running. 
So again, let me go back to my SQL Server computer. And for this, I'll take a look at the, let's go to the SQL Server Management Studio. Let me close out of this. I don't need that anymore. And the SQL Server Management Studio tells me that uh, this AF server, or excuse me, this SQL Server is actually running. If you notice, the stop is not dimmed, start is dimmed, indicates to me that this instance of SQL Server is up and running. So that's not the problem here. And let's take a look at the last thing to check. Uh, verify that you've got remote communication enabled and it's the right the right protocols enabled. So let me again go back to my SQL Server computer. Now this is something that's done in the Configuration Manager. Yeah, here's where the protocols are described. And yeah, TCP IP is specified and it's enabled, so that looks good. Now there are a couple of other uh, specific errors to look for that we describe here. The SQL Server error 229. Uh, basically that the AF server has not been granted permission to execute a stored procedure, or you may get an error if the stored procedure is missing from AF. In either case, well, in this case, that you'd have to rerun the um, setup kit in repair mode, and it should restore that procedure. So those are some of the troubleshooting tips that we'd suggest you try.